Believing oneself to be perfect is often the sign of a delusional mind. Here's your look at the new XO6 Star Trek First Contact Lieutenant Commander Data 1 6 scale figure. Data is one of the most popular characters in Star Trek, and no other character better expresses the wonder of discovery that is the heart of Star Trek than this android with a soul. The X-06 scale figure of Data will not only embody the hopefulness of the character, but also bring an element of Brent Spiner's performance into collectors' homes. This 1-6 scale figure recreates this iconic character in exquisite 1-6 detail, standing approximately 12 inches tall. Every element from his 24th century tunic to his custom black boots is authentically reproduced. The original portrait sculpts of Brent Spiner as Data have authentic hand-painted likenesses. Before we get a closer look at Lieutenant Commander Data from Star Trek First Contact, a personal favorite of mine of the Star Trek films, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. While I'm doing this, I'd like to thank as well the folks over at X06 that provide the sample of First Contact Data that we could have a look at in this review. We're going to stop the tape measure right there as that seems to be the highest point on this android. According to the readouts, you're looking at Data standing 12.2 inches in height. We can switch that quickly over to centimeters, revealing that Lieutenant Commander Data is 31 centimeters in height. While we may not have another X06 Star Trek character to compare next to Lieutenant Commander Data, I do have the next best thing available. Let's just move over Data for the time being and free up a little bit of space next to him. And we can bring in another Star Trek character that we looked at not too long ago. This one to the right is the released QMX Star Trek The Next Generation Captain Jean-Luc Picard. You can see a really good difference between the two figures. Supposedly, a lot of the people that were responsible for helming the QMX Star Trek property have moved over to the X-06 team, so they're going to be continuing on that same trend of doing Star Trek 6 scale figures. I will say that there seems to be some real improvements, especially just the fabric alone. You'll see with Data's outfit, it seems to fit the character's body a lot better, and it doesn't feel as loose as perhaps Captain Jean-Luc Picard's outfit was when we looked at the figure initially. So looking at the accessories that come included with Data, we'll start first with a hexagonal black display stand all molded here in plastic. There is other ways to display this stand, but I wanted to strip it down to the basics so you can see that even if you just take the things off that I'm about to show you, you actually have yourself quite a serviceable looking display stand with some rather nice looking honeycomb patterning. It does have the adjustable neck, of course, on the back with a cradle clip that houses the figure when you want to have him standing on top of it. But like I said, there are other configurations as well. It involves these extra overlay sheets that they include with the figure. Now, you can't put them on just like this. What you will have to do first is to remove the adjustable neck. It comes actually in two separate pieces. Just detach it like this. It comes with the main clip that attaches to the base. And then, of course, you've got your adjustable neck. Put the two together like this. And it's actually very precise the way that they design this. If you look at it, you'll see there's two little clips of plastic with a little gap in the middle here. And when you line this up, it actually fits right in between these little notches and that running bit of plastic in the middle. And like I said, that just clips right into that. But what we are gonna do though for the time being is I'm just gonna detach this because like I said, I wanted to show you guys the overlays. You get two possible options. The main one and primary, if you wanna have the figure just standing by himself, is this overlay right here. It's actually made of a very nice rigid plastic and almost has a bit of an illumination going through it. I guess if you found a way to illuminate this somehow, that would be able to project rather nicely. But you have it so that it's basically set up as a regular transporter pad for a single-use person standing on top of it. Or, if you have other figures that X06 are going to be releasing down the road, you also get this piece right here, which is part of a larger transport array. And that clips just, well, it wouldn't clip, it just basically sits on top like this. Whatever case you decide to go with, first put, of course, the overlay down. And then you get this piece right here. Now, when you are putting this down, line everything up. And in fact, it actually is even easier if you put this down here first. Then 
you're going to take these little corner pieces and those are going to fit just inside each of those open slots and just line everything up and snap that into place. And then you have just a regular single use transporter pad. You would just simply rinse and repeat, pop this back off, take the overlay out and then replace it with the transporter array. If you again want to have multiple figures. Now this is really clever the way that the EXO has done this to also come included with the display stand. Oh, of course we have to take this piece right here. There we go. Snap that into place. Like I said, you've got yourself quite the nice looking display stand, but they've done one better. They've also included these extra clips. So eventually when you do get six figures that EXO are going to be putting out, you can actually connect them all together. And while it may not look like much right now when you have this piece, imagine if you have six of these all connected together. And again, you can recreate the transport array. I think that's really smart the way that they've done that. I also like the fact that you do have this clear plastic piece that's over top of it. Not only does it prevent scuffing on the overlay that's underneath it, but it gives it a real nice gloss finish. Really nicely done. So again, eventually when XO6 releases more of these six scale Star Trek figures, you'll have these extra clips that you'll be able to connect, again, several of these display stands together. And then there's a couple of top pieces that'll just fit on top like this and they'll fit essentially that other hexagonal display stand that's gonna go along with it. That's for six figures. They did also include this extra piece as well, which is made of clear acrylic plastic. It works the same way as the clips, but I don't think it serves the purpose of connecting multiple bases together. You'll see that there's still the gap and the little ledge of plastic, and it fits just rather nicely on top like this. But it also looks like it's supposed to house a placard, something that was supposed to sit at the front of the display stand. That's my only guess is, I mean, as you can see, there's almost just a little ledge right there that looks like it would be able to fit a piece of paper or cardboard or small thin piece of plastic. Maybe this was something that was initially planned for a front placard to identify each of the characters that are standing on their own designated display stands. And maybe it's just something that XO6 decided to abandon. I'm not really sure if that's the case or not. Running through the rest of the things that come include with the figure, he gets the TR-590 Tricorder X. For its size, it's quite incredibly detailed. Short of the fact it doesn't have any light up options, obviously for its size, it does have at least a piece that can flip out. This is replicated only by use of magnets. You can see there's a magnet on the one side and a magnet on the other, but it replicates quite well the use of a hinge without having to actually put a hinge in there. Again, some fantastic detailing. If my eyes were able to make that out, I'd be able to read what that says on the screen, but it looks like it was applied by stickers, both the top and the bottom. Again, it's got some really solid looking detailing. I'm just gonna move this one over, and I wanted to bring in the one that came in clue with Captain Picard. Now this was again the QMX release, and I'll just get the flap folded down so you can see the difference between the two. Being that the size are both accommodating to one six scale hands, if you wanted to, you, I'm sure you could probably use this tricorder with data, but I think of the two, the newer one released by X06 is the much better improvement. Don't want to spend the entire review looking at data's tricorder, but again, I'm just quite amazed how much they were able to put into such a small accessory. Even the fact that it even says TR590 tricorder down below there, but we're going to go ahead and fold things up. One thing you will want to be careful of, by the way, is resist the urge to put pressure along the top, because if you do, you may find yourself sliding this up the screen and the bottom half of the tricorder finding its way somewhere onto the floor. One good thing, though, is they included a holstered piece where you can take the tricorder and slide it in like this, and this will fit onto the side of his jumpsuit. The phaser that we're going to be looking at goes to the left side. The tricorder then goes to the right side, and the best place to kind of eye up where you're going to be putting it is just below the seam line here. See the seam on the jumpsuit? This is where the elastic will be put in there. Just put the tricorder just underneath that and you've got quite a secure magnet in place. Next up we'll have a look at the Type 2 hand phaser. As you can see crafted nicely in that dolphin shape. The Type 2 hand phaser is one of my personal favorite sci-fi series weapons. I always wish I could have owned a one-to-one -one scale of this even if it didn't obviously work, but at least if it had light up functions, I think X06 has really done a great job on the phaser. Now for again, comparisons like we did with the tricorder, I'll bring in the one that came in clue with Captain Picard. 
Picard's is notably a lot bigger than the smaller one that comes included with data. But again, if you really wanted to, for its size, it's not too grossly large. I guess if you wanted to, you could use it for data, but I think data's is the nicer of the two. And like the tricorder, he does also come include with a holster. It kind of looks like a woman's slipper. It's curved in such a way that you can just slide the dolphin-shaped phaser into the compartment like that. And again, there's the there's the magnet on the back there, nice circular magnet. This is going to go to the opposite side of Data's body. Just move his arm out of the way, and that just will attach right there. Just again, if you're not too, not, not too certain when you get in this figure for yourself, just look for the elastic band, the one that goes around his waist. Again, tricorder will go on this side, and the hand phaser will go on the other. Short of a few swappable hands, and of course that interchangeable head sculpt that we'll look at in a second, the last of Data's accessories is the Type 3B Phaser Rifle, a much more meaner movie upgrade to the one originally used in the TV series. The TV series Phaser Rifles I always found was underwhelming. It came across like a Type 2 hand phaser, just a little bit elongated, and of course the handle's down below. The movie counterpart, on the other hand, come across more military, like they could inflict a lot more damage. You can see the silver that we saw earlier with the phasers, as well as the tricorder, also come into play here, as the majority of this is painted in that really nice metallic silver. The end nozzle, as you can see, is all still the molded black plastic, while the back stock some, gets some additional afforded dark gunmetal gray. That looks really nice. I like that it's different also from the handle. Now, for all the accessories that we just finished having a look at, I know there was a lot of territory to cover, Data has dedicated hands for the job. I'm going to just put down the phaser rifle for the time being. I assure everybody it's not armed. And I want to first look at these hands right here. Now, these ones are dedicated for holding the phasers. And you'll see there's a difference between the two. It's more so in the thumb. See how this one has the thumb higher up? This one has the thumb lower down. This one here is for the hand phaser. This one here is for the phaser rifle. Simply just take the hand phaser that we looked at earlier, and you'll see it's designed perfectly for it. It contours nicely. And because that thumb is sticking up like this, it sits right above that trigger firing button. So of course there's that. Then to go back to that other hand we looked at, because the thumb is a little bit lower down, this is suited for holding the phaser rifle. These are also very soft plastic. So if you have any difficulty getting this around the, the handle, uh, you can actually just pry these fingers a little bit away from the palm. I find it's actually super easy. All you do is just take, I find it helps to put it in this way. Now you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, you're putting it on the wrong way. No, no, actually, if you put it this way and then you spin this around, the thumb nestles rather nicely against that handle. And then all you really then have to do is bring the figure, finger up and it sits perfectly against the trigger. To go one step further though, they also included this somewhat relaxed hand. Because, uh, keep in mind, Data's going to have it on this side of his body. But then the other hand, if you want to have him nestling and holding it, they've designed this hand in such a way, see so it's got a kind of a curved shape to it, it fits perfectly underneath, underneath like the stock, or I guess underneath the undercarriage of the phaser rifle. And you can have Data double handling, I guess, dual wielding the phaser rifle. And that really is a nice looking touch. But to go one step further, looking at the other hands, of course, he comes also included with this hand right here. Now it's not quite similar to this one. You can see this one's a little bit more relaxed. This one has more of a boxy shape going for it. Take the tricorder that we looked at earlier. I find it's also helpful. You can do one of two things really. Fit this into his hand like this if you want to have it closed. I would recommend though, if you are looking to open up the tricorder, it's probably easier to take the back plate off first because after all, that's not the thing you really want to have dropped and lost. And then from there, just widen the grip, fit the tricorder down like this, and then go back and take that paneled piece and fit it just into the hand like that. And of course, making sure everything is lined up appropriately. There we go. You can see Data has him, him holding the tricorder rather nicely, rather comfortably. The last of his interchangeable hands aren't really as exciting as the things we just finished looking at. He comes also with a pair of close fists. I mean, really, I asked the question for all the cool accessories that come included with this figure. I, I don't even know why I would want to really use close fists, but they're there. They're included, and they are nicely sculpted. You'll get a bit of a tease there at the coloring that they've used here for the hands. That will, of course, carry over when we look at Data's face. Speaking of Data's face, why don't we have a look at that right now? Oh, I can't forget this. One last thing that actually comes also included with the figure is a Starfleet personnel file. 
You can see here it's the outer skeletal frame of the NCC-1701 Enterprise E. Down below it does have Lieutenant Commander data and it does have a translucent, it's made of translucent plastic, so I guess if you were able to put this against a light source, you could technically really illuminate from the back to the front and maybe have it somehow displayed behind the figure. Like I said, it's just a thin card of plastic, but I appreciate the fact that they would even include this with the figure in the first place. So let's finally have a look at Data's face. Apologies, I know you guys were anxious to see this earlier. In hand, I will say this figure is rather impressive. When I saw the image's first surface online of what Exo-6 was capable of doing with a Star Trek 6 scale line, and the fact that they would even decide to tackle Data first of all the characters, had me pretty interested. Data, I feel, would be a hard character to tackle, not only from a likeness standpoint, but being able also to capture the right skin pigmentation. Because obviously, as you've seen the series and the movies, Data's skin is a more lighter color, but it's not quite white, and it's not quite a yellowish tint. It's sort of a combination of the two. And I think the coloring is right on there. Another telltale sign, certainly when you're seeing a character's portrait, is do you see the actor when you see it from all sides? I feel like in Data's case, and Brent Spiner's case, seeing it from the side, it looks just as much like Brent Spiner as it does from the front. I think really where it hones in the most of the likeness is when you're seeing it straight on like this. But it's not to certainly say that when you're seeing it from the sides, do you lose any little bit of that likeness? Like I said, I think you're seeing it from all sides, my own personal opinion at least. The very fact that they were able to capture little imperfections to Data's skin like this is quite the testament to the sculpting team. Somewhat ironic the fact that we're even talking about imperfections to an android's skin, and yet, you know, of course, it being based on an actor with makeup on his face, there is going to be some visual, visible indentations to his face, for example, little pock marks and little scarring and stuff like that. But I will say, like, up close and personal, very much, that looks like Brent Spiner. The very fact that they were able to put like little wrinkles on the forehead, for example, slight bags underneath his eyes, for example, even darker shadowing around his eyes is a nice touch. And even though he doesn't actually have a light up function, obviously that wouldn't have been a case with this particular figure, his eyes seem to have a glowing look to them. Now, of course, that can all be contributed to the fact that he's got this off yellowish green eye, more specifically his iris, and the coloring around this uh, you can hopefully see there. Even the color of his eyeball is a different color than the iris around it, or the iris in the middle of it. Yeah, I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. The only thing I probably would have said, maybe as a, as an afterthought, certainly when it comes to my feelings of the figure, is the hair. The hair, as you can see, similar to the show, he has it slicked back like this. The sculpting of the hair is pretty good. I maybe would have made this not as shiny as what it is. Now, again, I understand that with Data in the series, his hair looks slicked back. But I don't know if I would have made it as shiny as what they ended up doing here. I mean, literally, it's the only thing I could... If I could pinpoint anything that isn't necessarily wrong with the figure, but maybe something I would have changed differently, I would just say the sheen to his hair is just a little too shiny. But, I mean, again, the takeaway from this is just a fantastic head sculpt on... Brent Spiner, of course, the actor who portrayed Data in the various years of Star Trek The Next Generation, and of course the subsequent films, specifically First Contact, which of course this figure is based from. Now, I did say that Data came included with an interchangeable head sculpt, and this is the secondary head that he comes included with. If you've seen Star Trek First Contact, then you know the significance of why he has the skin on the one side. It's the way that the Borg Queen tries to get to Data and have him join and align with her by grafting on this human skin where Data's finally able to feel things like sensation. The detailing is just as good as the original head sculpt that we looked at earlier. The at least android side of things, short of a little imperfection I think I've got on the side there, but it seems like it's the exact same head sculpt, short of the fact, of course, the skin side not only has a different color, not only is the iris a different color, blue instead of that light off green color, but also the draping of the hair you can see falling down on the one side of his face. It also seems that while looking at the hair, not only is it combed differently, but it also looks as if they've added additional brown. There's some lighter strands of brown that I don't think it was on the other side of his head, at least as I'm spinning it around. 
I love the fact that they would have included both head sculpts. I think at the end of the day, me being the purist and loving Data just the way he originally looks, I'm probably still sticking with this head sculpt, but I appreciate the fact that they would have actually taken the time and included a secondary head sculpt, especially for the price point of what they're asking for these figures. Anyways, to change the head, I'm just going to put that one down for the time being. You're going to grab onto his torso, but you're going to be very careful, I hope, of the insignia. It's just been glued to the torso piece, or specifically to his jumpsuit. You don't want to clip that by mistake. So sort of grab around that, hold on to Data's head, and just yank it off the ball joint. Um, the one thing I have noticed, though, is that the collar piece inside is very prone to tucking inside every single time you change the head out. You may find yourself maybe taking them tweezers or something and trying to fish that back out. But what we will do for the time being is I'm going to take the swappable head, being careful not to tuck too much of that collar piece in, and I'm going to snap that back into place. You see what I mean there. The collar tends to fold in. Maybe take some tweezers. And certainly you will want to be careful of the little blips there. Of course, his ranking there on the side. But that's the head sculpt that you get certainly as an alternative to it. Again, we can bring in the defaulted so you can see the difference again between the two. For me, it's again personal preference more than anything else. I like the regular stock data head. But again, factoring in for the price point, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but for what they're selling these figures for, and to think that we're actually getting two very unique, very nicely hand-painted head sculpts, is really a nice touch on Exo6's part just went in there and actually fished the collar piece back out. One thing you will want to be careful of when it comes to swapping out Data's heads is the fact that the softer material that they use for the collar piece is more prone to getting lodged inside where the neck actually goes into the cavity. It wouldn't be so bad, but then you would have to worry as well about these ranking pips. That's actually what they're called here. They're, I'm guessing, adhered the same way as his badges adhere to the front of his uniform. The badge isn't so much the issue, but because the pips are so close to where the neck is, um, I will worry that, I would recommend as well, just be careful that that doesn't get tucked in there, because those could probably pop those pips right out. How many times would I ever say that? Um, speaking of ranking pips, now he is a lieutenant commander. It's a little harder to see here, but the first two are solid gold. The one after that is only outlined in gold, with the center area being all in black. Just be careful of that. It isn't so bad if you're sticking with the stock data head sculpt, but if you're somebody that's prone to popping out the head every single time, you just want to make sure then again, that collar piece doesn't get tucked in too much that you don't pop those pips out. Okay, I said it a second time. Now, this outfit is based on the first contact outfit. So it's, instead of the more traditional next generation outfit or the one that they use for the generations, which is my own personal favorite Starfleet uniform, they instead use an all gray generic body or generic costume. And then the thing that changes depending on where you are in Starfleet, of course, what category I guess you're working in, the color piece is the thing that, of course, changes color. Now, even though we are looking at first contact data, I'd be open to the idea if they could down the road release Generations versions of these characters' data, the upcoming Picard that we're going to be having a look at. But I will say, though, even though this isn't my favorite of the Starfleet uniforms, it's been handled extremely well by XO6. I mean, even when you're looking at it up close and personal, not only is the stitch very clean, but also the material that they used as well seems to be a more heavier type of material. I really also like the fact that they added all these little dotted line stitchings, little seam lines that you can see that run all the way around onto the side and also onto the back as well. Of course, we only quickly looked at it, but of course there is Data's in insignia right there. This is just applied, I'm guessing, from a, a, an adhesive of glue or some sort. Be careful of this. You don't want that flicking off your costume. Now, the outfits aren't removable. There doesn't seem to be a place where you can unzip this and, and, and remove it. It looks like it probably was sewn right onto the figure. I wouldn't recommend trying to take this off of data and putting it onto another six-scale figure. Don't do that, whatever you do, because it looks like it's pretty seamless, no pun intended, all the way around. No zipper lines, no Velcro. It looks finished from all sides. And of course, it's all just the black material all the way down. You've got the elasticized uh, waist area where that's a little bit more fitted to the rest of his body. The only other place there really there is color is the end of his sleeve. Now they opted to paint this in, it seems, rather than actually sewing on a strip of yellow fabric, but at least it's, it's flush to his sleeve. Whereas if they stitched that on, 
you would see that the fabric would be stick, sticking up just a little bit more. By painting it on, I mean, it's the simpler route of painting it, but at least it keeps it flush to the rest of his sleeve. Of course, there's Data's hands, which we already looked at earlier. Looking a little further down on the figure, then we get down to his boots. I really like how the boots were handled here. They're all, again, molded in black plastic. But I, I like the fact that there's all these little crease lines across it. And, of course, in similar fashion to previous Next Generation outfits, he has little stirrup straps underneath it. I don't know if that's the actual term that they gave it, but little stirrup straps that actually keep this, this costume not only attached to his, his under footwear, but it also keeps then the outfit tight and fitted against the rest of his body. So I'm going to put data here for one second. And again, even though it's QMX that we were looking at for the Captain Picard, I just want to bring Picard in. I just really, again, want to show you guys the vast improvement on the material here. The outfit fits a lot better, I feel, on data. It doesn't look as baggy like Captain Picard's was, for example. Different outfits altogether, granted. The next generation, known for always pulling down the tops there, especially Captain Picard was always notorious for doing that. But I feel like the outfit... There has been some real improvements from what QMX was doing with their next generation line to what we're getting here with the first contact line. Data has a much better looking outfit all around. Let's have a look now at the articulation on Data. His head rotates all the way around. Of course, it's sitting on that ball peg. It also allows the figure to hinge up, hinge down, and also rock back and forth as well. Um, it doesn't seem anymore the case where six scale figures tend to have separate heads from the rest of their necks. Normally, that would have afforded the figure some additional articulation from the head independently from the rest of the neck. But in all honest truth, I mean, not only is it an additional cost of have, having them make a head separate from the neck, but it also ruins that seamless look that you would get by having the head just simply attached to the neck. And definitely in a case like Date, I'm glad that they kept it as all one piece. As for his arms, his arms hinge out. Not at a full 90 degree angle bend, but a little less than that, about 45 degrees. You can also bring the arms forward and back. Also bringing the arms up like this, it really then gives me an opportunity to show you guys the additional padding that they put at the top of his, of his uniform. It gives him, again, that nice squared off look for the Starfleet uniform. I love that. He has a swivel on the bicep area that attaches, of course, to the shoulder. He has what I was surprised to find, a double hinge on the elbow. And whatever hand you decide to display data rotates all the way around being, of course, it's attached to being that peg, that hinge peg right there. Now, for his upper torso, this is this is interesting. He does have a ball joint. That's not the interesting part, is the fact that not so much from the sides, but I've noticed from the front, and I've also noticed on the back, he seems to have some additional padding. It's probably hard to kind of gauge that in the video, but take my word for it. It seems like there's some additional padding on the front. I'm guessing the reason why they did that is not so much to make him beefier, more muscular, but again, to give him that nice squared flat look of the Starfleet uniforms. It's those attentions to detail that I really do appreciate. It also seems like they've added some additional padding here. Now, some of that could actually just be built into the, the, the material of the outfit because it, it seems like it's a thicker material, but I think that they may have added a little bit of additional padding. You feel a little bit of it here in the in the thighs, but you feel so much more of it here on the front and the back of the figure. Really nice. The legs split out on Data. You can also move the legs forward and back. He has that swivel on the top cut of his thigh, double hinge on his knee. And though he's a little bit more limited because he's got the straps that go underneath his heel or just in front of his heel, you can move the feet back and forth this way and you can also ankle pivot them. I'm just going to put Data down here for one more second here. And I'm going to free up a little bit of space next to him. Why are we freeing up space? Just so we can bring in the QMX release of Captain Picard. And again, the only reason why I wanted to bring this, this Picard in, even though it's technically from two different points in the Star Trek Next Generation era, I really want to show you guys also where I feel improvement has been made. QMX, for its time of what they were doing with the Star Trek property, I think produced pretty good-looking figures. I was more of a bigger fan of the classic Trek because I think they handled that line a little bit better. And we really didn't get a whole lot of Next Generation figures anyways. But seeing the jumpsuits that Picard is wearing here sits a little baggier, sits a little looser, and doesn't really fit formally well enough to his body. I want to really then show you guys the improvements that XO6 have then done on the first contact uh, data, even though it's, again, a different Starfleet uniform, how much better it fits to his body, and it gives him that nice squared-off boxy look that I would expect to see with a Starfleet uniform. Data here is all locked and loaded and final looks displayed along with his phaser rifle Type 3A. 
interesting thing about the phaser rifle though is on the back of the box it advertised the contents as him coming included with a phaser rifle rifle type 3a if you go over to exo6's website though they actually advertise the contents of him coming included with a type 3b phaser rifle Whatever category class this phaser rifle ends up being, it's still going to be my preferred way of displaying the figure, not necessarily slouching on the other accessories because it comes with actually a fair bit, the tricorder, the small portable hand phaser, as well as a whole ton of interchangeable hands. And let's not, of course, forget the fact he comes with two swappable head sculpts. I'm amazed the fact that this company was able to put out a figure, a six scale figure for the price point of what they're asking for. And just in case you are curious, over on their website, which is www.xo-6.com, they're advertising data, Lieutenant Commander data specifically, at $169.95. For the fact that this figure sits very well underneath $200, and he comes with as much as he does, two swappable head sculpts, and a display stand that gives you two different ways of displaying it with the transporter pad or the larger transporter array, if you get more than one of the, the figures that they're going to be releasing... I think that's a lot for a one, for $170, $170 price point. Um, the biggest thing for me right now is trying to decide which head sculpt I want to go with. I don't want to say it's grown on me because that's kind of been playing into it, but the screen, skin grafted face has grown on me a little bit the same way it's grown on Commander Data. I thought initially I was just going to settle on the defaulted stock head sculpt because that's just the regular data that I know and love. But, you know, there's something to be said about that grafted skin head sculpt. I don't know, I might just end up displaying it with him for the time being. It's a great looking figure, a very well tailored outfit as well. You can definitely see the improvements that they've made from the original days of the QMX releases of the Star Trek six scale figures. I'm really super excited for what to see, to see in store, what they've got in store for the future six scale figures of Star Trek characters. The next one we're gonna be getting as teased already online is the Captain Picard, also still in the first contact outfit. I'm curious, though, because, again, the idea that the display bases connect to one another. I've heard six connect to one another. What other characters are they going to be releasing from First Contact? And will they be expanding the franchise beyond the scope of First Contact? Dare I even say that we may be getting ourselves next generation or generations outfits? I would be super excited to see a generations version of Picard, Geordi, and a Data. Stop it. Big thank you to the folks, though, at XO6 that provided this sample of Lieutenant Commander data from Star Trek First Contact. We could have a look at it in this review. I'll provide the link down below in the video description that will take you on over to the website, which again is www.xo-6.com. And you can pre-order data over there if you'd like. And like I said, the price point for this guy is $169.95. Can't beat that at all. If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure as well you turn on the bell notification. And make sure as well you're coming back to this channel regularly because there's always new videos popping up. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.